Number 59, integrated concepts. The practical limit to an electric field in air is about three times 10 to the six newtons per coulomb. Above this strength, sparking takes place and things happen. Letter A, calculate the distance a free proton must travel in this field to reach 3% of the speed of light starting from rest. All right. So uh, basically, let's just let's just list a couple of things. Well, first, here's a little picture. All right, I got a uniform electric field here. I like to draw my electric fields with something positive, and then something like a negative to show that the field lines always go from positive to negative. I got a proton in here, and tell me what direction will the proton begin to accelerate to the right or to the left uh, uh, in my picture? It should begin to accelerate to the right. Right? How did you know that? Well. You know this area is positive, this area is negative, so protons are attracted to the negative and repulsed by the positive, right? So, great. Okay, so now we have the initial velocity here being equal to zero meters per second, right? And what's the final velocity? Well, the final velocity, they said it has to reach 3% of the speed of light. So what is 3% of the speed of light? We'll simply take 3%, right, in terms of a decimal, 0 0.03, and multiply that by the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And that is the, that will be, 3% of the speed of light. So 3 times 10 to the 8th times 0 0.03, what do we get? So it's going to be 9, right? So we're going to have 9 times 10 to the 7th, it should be. Okay. And what do we have there? Actually, well, what do we have? No, times 10 to the 6th, right? What am I doing? I can't even see. Sorry. Yeah, 10 to the 6th. And that's times 10 to the 6th. And that will then be equal to, uh, so that's meters per second. Great. That's the final velocity. And we don't know the object's acceleration. Okay, I don't know why I said AC there. Just the object's acceleration. We, we're not sure of the proton's acceleration. And we also don't know the time, right? And they're asking us to calculate the distance, so we need to know x, right? So if you followed me in the past problem, you know in order to find x, we're going to have to find acceleration somehow. And we know acceleration. How do we find acceleration? Well, we know accelerations relate to forces. And you know if this proton is in this electric field, it, there's a force pushing it away from the positive plate and a force attracting it to the negative plate. So what I like to do then is I like to just start with the simple idea that I know force is related to acceleration via my man Newton, right? Via this formula, F is equal to ma. So uh, I realize that in order to find the acceleration of this uh, proton, I can say that the force on the proton then is equal to the mass of the proton multiplied by the acceleration of the proton. What I can do then is solve for that acceleration of the proton. And I realize that it's going to be the force that's acting on that proton divided then by the mass of that proton. Do you know the mass of the proton? Well, you might not know it off the top of your head, but you're going to need to know it. Right, so the mass of a proton is going to be equal to 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. We should also just write down the charge of the proton. That's going to be a positive 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Now, in terms of the you know mag in terms of the signs of the charges, I like to just always plug in absolute values, even if the formula says I I don't have to. I can plug in the actual sign. I like to just deal with absolute values here and then think about what the direction should be like. So I realize that I know the mass of the proton, but I don't know the force on that proton. So I unfortunately at, at as it currently stands, can't find that acceleration. So I got to think now, I got to change gears. I got to figure out, can I find the force that's acting on the proton? And what do we basically know? Well, we know that this electric field here in the problem is three times 10 to the six newtons per coulomb, right? That's what they told us in the problem. Okay, well, if I know electric field and I know the charge of a proton, can I relate that to the force on the proton somehow? Of course we can, right? We know that formula that the net external electric field acting on an object is equal to then the force that's acting on that object divided by the charge of that object. So to solve this thing for force then, right, this is the force then on the proton. This is the charge of the proton. This is the electric field exerted on the proton. So the force on that proton then will simply be equal to the electric field that's acting on the proton multiplied by the Q or the charge of that proton. Now, I have everything I kind of need here to solve for A, right? Because we know that this force of the proton is the same as this, right? So I can just do a little substitution here between the two. So let's do it. So we have the acceleration of the proton, 
will be equal to the electric field that that proton is experiencing multiplied by the charge of that proton all divided by the mass of that proton. And voila, now we have everything, right? So let's calculate. So we have 3 times 10 to the 6th multiplied by the charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And then divide that all now by the mass, which is about 1.67 times 10 to the minus, oops, minus 27. And we get the acceleration of that proton will now equal 3 times 10 to the 6th times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, all divided by 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27. So 2.87 2 times 10 to the 14th, all right, meters per second squared. So this is now the acceleration of that proton. So guess what? I'm going to go back to here and erase now that unknown A, because I know what it is, it's now going to be, now here's the thing, right? Let's plug it in, 2.87 times 10 to the 14 meters per second squared. And let's think about the sign of this thing. Should it be positive or should it be negative? Well, according to my picture, I'm showing this thing accelerating to the right. right? It's going to be speeding up, moving to the right. I said that its final velocity was also positive, so this should be a positive value. Okay, great. Now we know enough uh, to solve for the displacement. So this is just simple kinematics now. This is Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2 times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. So the final velocity here, as we mentioned, will be 9 times 10 to the 6th, that whole thing squared, and that will then equal the initial velocity, which was 0, plus then 2 times that acceleration of 2.87 times 10 to the 14th multiplied then by the x. Solve this now for x. So we get 9 times 10 to the 6th squared divided by, parenthesis, 2 times 2.8, well, let me use the exact value. One second. I'm, gonna, oh, I'm just going to use the exact value for the uh, acceleration there. So what was it, 2.87 we found? Wait, where was that now? Oh, no, did I erase it? I erased it, so I'm just going to use the approximate, oops, 2.87 times 10 to the 14th. That'll be good enough. And here we get now 0 0.141 meters. So that's how uh, far it must travel to reach 3% of the speed of light. Not really that far, <laughs> right? So that's letter A. And uh, is this practical in air or must it occur uh, in a vacuum? Uh, it'd be better to have it occur in a vacuum. Is it practical? Uh, I don't know. Depends on what you mean by practical. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. Hit the like button and mention our channel to your friends. If we've helped you out at all, we might be able to help them out too. Thank you so much.